Have we just seen the beginnings of war between Iran and Israel? Conventional news sources are all over the worrying developments in the Middle East in recent days. But what those sources won't do is put those events into temporal context. On this channel, we have a handy little tool called Astrology that can do just that. And it's telling us that whatever just began in the Middle East isn't just a flash in the pan. It's likely the start of something much more substantial the story is going to play out over the next two years and possibly beyond. And we also have an idea of exactly when this story might reach a culmination. In this video, I'm going to explain when that is and why astrology is flashing warning signs about this month's events. We're going to be covering some scary topics in this video, so if you're of an anxious disposition, I'd suggest giving it a miss. But if you're willing to join me, then get ready for another journey into the past to understand the present and the future. Planetary synodic cycles are cycles generated by the relative motion of two celestial bodies from the perspective of us here on Earth. Now, the best known example of this is the lunar cycle, where the changing positions of the Sun and the Moon around the Earth result in changes to the Moon's appearance as it transitions from new Moon to full Moon and back again. But in fact, every pair of planets generates a cycle of this kind. But these cycles aren't just about the motion of celestial bodies through the sky. They tell stories. And the cycle used by traditional astrologers to track stories of challenge, suffering, and struggle as they unfolded over time was the two-year cycle of Mars and Saturn. This month, Mars and Saturn were in conjunction, which means that the last two-year Mars-Saturn cycle has ended and a new one has begun. The last Mars-Saturn conjunction happened on April the 5th, 2022, close to the beginning of the Ukraine war. That day, Ukraine's President Zelensky appeared in front of the UN Security Council and he accused Russia of committing war crimes in Bucha and other parts of Ukraine. When Mars and Saturn reached major aspects in that cycle, in other words, when they moved into certain important angular alignments, we saw major developments in that war, particularly having to do with Zelensky's efforts to obtain support from the international community. At the Mars-Saturn opposition in July 2023, we saw a turning point in these efforts. On July the 11th, Ukraine was refused acceptance into NATO, which angered President Zelensky. This time period may even have constituted a turning point in the war itself. And so we can see how the events that happen around the time of Mars-Saturn conjunctions are seed moments for stories that play out over the course of that two-year cycle. And this is why the events that happened in the Middle East and elsewhere over the past couple of weeks are so important to understanding what might be coming down the line. If you're getting value out of this video, then please do me a favor and click that like button down there. And if you're new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing, and making sure that you catch future episodes. There's a lot going on in the sky this month. We had a solar eclipse in Aries on April the 8th, the Mars-Saturn conjunction on April the 10th, and a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus on April the 21st. In the April 2024 forecast episode on this channel, I talked about how these Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions have signified trigger moments for armed conflicts and liberatory impulses in history. Put them together and we tend to see cultural and technological breakthroughs, as well as trigger moments for liberatory movements and armed conflicts. For example, we had one in 1775 when the American Revolutionary War broke out, and at the next one, 14 years later, in 1789, the American government was founded and the French Revolution broke out. There was also one in 1914 when the First World War broke out, and another in 1983 when computer malfunction brought the world very close to an accidental nuclear war. Now, it's very possible that we're seeing a trigger moment of huge importance right now in the Middle East. And what's happened in Israel has had to do with Iranian missiles, among other things, something I specifically mentioned in that April forecast. Now on June the 7th, Iran unveiled a hypersonic ballistic missile named Fatah. And on November the 19th, it unveiled an upgraded version of that same missile. Can't help but wonder if we may see this theme come up again in April. I can't say I got things exactly right, but I think I was quite close. Now, on March the 22nd, Mars moved into Pisces, the sign Saturn has been in 
since March 2023, making the two planets co-present, which is just an astrologer's term for in the same sign. And on April the 1st, Israel attacked the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria, killing 11 people, including two Iranian Revolutionary Guard generals. The Iranian response came on April the 13th, when they launched a barrage of some 300 missiles and drones at Israel, many of which were reportedly shot down. At the time, Mars and Saturn were just a couple of degrees from exact conjunction. And this was the first time that Iran has attacked Israel directly, rather than through its proxies in the region. At the time I'm recording this, Israel is now mulling retaliation against Iran, and may, by the time you see this, have responded. And so we've seemingly entered a sequence of tit-for-tat attacks. The US is, according to some reports, trying to prevent this situation from escalating into all-out war, but we have to concede that this is looking increasingly like a possibility. I think the theme of conflict between Israel and Iran has now been set as a theme of this two-year Mars-Saturn cycle. We can expect that even if the situation calms in the coming days, and I hope it does, the theme of conflict between these states will return as Mars and Saturn make further aspects with each other. That's obviously an incredibly worrying and depressing prospect, and unfortunately the astrology suggests there's more to worry about. The question of nuclear weapons is one that hums in the background of the conflict between Israel and Iran. Israel is known to have nukes in its arsenal, and Iran is believed to be trying to acquire them if it hasn't already done so. Analysts believe that future Israeli reprisals could be targeted against sites related to Iran's nuclear program. And unfortunately, this wasn't the only way in which the theme of conflict and nuclear technology came up at the time of the Mars-Saturn conjunction. On April the 7th, the International Atomic Energy Agency reported that the Russian-controlled Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine had been damaged by a suicide drone attack. The Zaporizhia is the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe, and the IAEA is warning that as a result of these attacks, it's getting dangerously close to a nuclear accident. Russia accused the Ukrainians of carrying out the attack, which they have denied. But whoever was responsible isn't the important point here. In the April forecast video I mentioned before, I said that the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction of April the 21st is triggering what I called the nuclear chart, and that the theme of nuclear technology could come up in a challenging way this month. This conjunction will be stimulating this chart the chart for the first controlled nuclear fission reaction, it will be directly opposing the Mars of this chart. Now, when this chart has been stimulated in the past, we've seen events around nuclear technology come into the news. And lo and behold, the theme is being highlighted right now. We have this incident at the power plant, and Israel may well be mulling attacks against Iran's nuclear program, whether now or further down the line. There have also been suggestions that Iran might test a nuclear weapon in response to any Israeli attacks. So, needless to say, it's very worrying to see developments like this at the time of a Mars-Saturn conjunction, because that implies that they're harbingers of more to come over the course of the Mars-Saturn cycle. Now, I want to stress, we don't have to run to worst-case scenarios here, but I think it's highly likely that nuclear technology and its relation to conflict is going to emerge as a key theme of this two-year Mars-Saturn cycle. And what's more, because we know the future movements of Mars and Saturn, we already know when the most dangerous moments of the cycle will come. In this early episode of World Astrology Report, I looked at the astrology of the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. In that incident, the Soviet Union placed nuclear missiles in Cuba leading to a tense standoff with the United States, in which the world seemingly came close to all-out nuclear war. In my video, I explained how, at the time of a Mars-Saturn conjunction, in February 1962, the US placed economic sanctions on Cuba, effectively declaring economic war on the socialist island state. When those two planets reached their opposition in October of 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis itself began. In other words, we saw a theme seeded at a conjunction which came to full and dangerous fruition 
at the opposition. You might see how oppositions have the quality of a full moon here. So as Mars and Saturn make aspects with each other over the coming two years, we're going to see events connected to the stories seeded in this conjunctional period, which as we've seen, seemingly include conflict between Israel and Iran and nuclear technology. The most significant developments will come at what we call the hard aspects of the cycle, which are the waxing square, the opposition, and the waning square. Mars and Saturn will reach the waxing square on August the 16th of this year. Look out for that time, it looks like a dangerous moment. And their opposition will come on August the 9th, 2025. That also looks like a very dangerous time period. Now, this is obviously all very troubling, but unfortunately, there's no way around that. These are troubling times. But remember, nothing in astrology or prediction is for certain. Even though cycles are very reliable tools for giving us the broad outline of events to come, they don't give us the specifics. So we should leave open the possibility that cool heads will prevail in this conflict and it remains limited in scope, even if the hard aspects of Mars and Saturn will time moments of great tension. But we should also be mentally prepared for more challenging possibilities. So that's it for this episode. If you found it interesting and want some more background on why nuclear technology is playing into the psycho-spiritual background of these times, then I suggest you watch this episode in which I showed why the threat of nuclear weapons seems to be growing as we move through the 2020s. Thanks, and see you next time.